Hello, this is Siobhan Cunningham with more answers to your questions. Thank you for your questions. Keep sending them in. Um, send them to office at sccunningham.com or add them to any of my social media and I'll answer them for you. As long as they're clean and nice and decent questions and I'll answer them for you. Um, but thank you for them. Um, I'm starting with something today. How long does it take you to write a book? Um, it, for example, the deal it took about six months um, to read. Oh, sorry, to write that book. Um, that's a series of about eight. It will be the Fallen Angel series. So um, six months a book. So it's going to be about four years before I finish the whole series. But uh, I'm well up for it because it's. Uh, I'm loving it. Um, because I work part time, um, sometimes it can take longer. Um, but um, if I'm not working much at all, six months is about the right time. Um, does your police work help with storylines? Um, I took the Official Secrets Act while well, I signed it, so um, I can't talk too much about my police work. But yes, um, I'm a crime investigator and it does help with um, learning the lingo of how things work, um, talking about forensics, talking about criminology, talking about the law. Um, maybe the psyche of how, is, how a criminal mind works. Um, it helps with things like that. But I can't write about any of the storylines that I come across um, within my work, any of the, the murders or um, offences that happen. I have to um, be quiet about those because I signed the Official Secrets Act. Um, but I'm very grateful for working with them. They are an amazing bunch of people. And we're very lucky in this country that we've got such a force. Um, they work long hours for not much money, not much help. Um, they often get abuse, um, but they're a bunch of good, hard-working men and women who I take my hat off to, and it's a privilege to work amongst them. Um, I thank them for that. Um, I'll shut up now about them, because I'm not allowed to talk about them. <laughs> um, what inspires you? Oh, that awful question that always, always asked. It's not awful, it's just hard. It's hard to pin down because everything inspires me. Um, a walk in the park, a walk on the beach, go to the supermarket, I overhear a conversation, driving in your car, watching the news, watching television, everything inspires me. I love people watching, I love observing. I mean, I could sit on a cafe for hours with a cup of coffee and um, or 10 and uh, just watch people. I think people are fascinating. Um, so maybe it's people maybe is the answer that inspires me and what they're capable of, um, what they what they hide, <laughs> how they cope with certain situations. So yeah, maybe it's an easy answer and that's um, people. Um, how did you get to be where you are today? Well, um, I'm quite old. <laughs> so I've done a lot of things. I think I've had a bit of an accidental life. Nothing has actually gone to plan. When I left school, I did my A-levels, I wanted to go into law. Um, I wanted to stand up in court and defend people who were innocent. So I had this dream of, you know, giving out justice and saving lives and things like that. Um, but um, as part of my law A-level, I went to, sat in the back of a lot of courtrooms. And I learned quite quickly that it doesn't always work like that. Justice isn't always given within court. Um, there's too many factors. Um, that can be wrong things that can be thrown out of court for the smallest detail. Um, not, not enough evidence, but although it's clear that the perpetrator did what he did, sometimes it's not enough evidence. Um, you know, suspects are too scared, to, uh, sorry, victims and witnesses are too scared to stand up in the box. It's a hard industry and it wasn't what I thought it was. So um, while I was studying for that, I was wandering around London <laughs> walking in the street shopping or something and I got discovered by um, a model agent who wanted me to join his books so I became a model. Actually that's much more suitable for my blondness. Um, I am a bit of a dumb blonde and um, so I wanted to travel the world, wear pretty clothes, meet interesting people. So I did a bit of that. I did a bit of modelling, fashion modelling for about five years and I did travel the world and I did meet interesting people and it is an amazing industry to be in. Although there is a dark side, there is some sad stuff that happens in there. There's a bit of um, gentle abuse of the models. Um, they're treated like cattle. They're made to diet stupidly. Um, I couldn't do the dieting. I wasn't very good at the dieting. And I couldn't do the casting couch. I mean, I think you have to shag around a bit sometimes to do the stuff. Oh, I'm not interested in that. Um, I'm not interested in the drugs. I wasn't interested. I love food too much, I think. Pretty clothes, beautiful people. 
lovely surroundings but I like my food <laughs> um, anyway it did teach me a lot five years of it was enough and um, uh, yeah I thank the modeling life for that um, then what did I do then I met a sax player who um, we set up a little business in London and we had a recording studio and we did music for film for about eight, for eight years I was with him um, and it was fantastic the music industry is a lovely industry um, very exciting he was very talented he he played the sax on Baker Street he was he played with the Pink Floyd Marvin Gaye Tina Turner to name but a few he was on most things I think in his 70s and 80s he was on most tracks his sax, sax solos were everywhere and um, we divorced but before we divorced we quite wonderfully had a daughter called Scarlett, Scarlett Raven, who is now a contemporary artist, and I am uber proud of her, um, so I thank Raph for that. Uh, you know, divorce happens, but you know, the children you are you bring up together are the best thing out of that, so I thank him for that. Um, then what did I do? Uh, when we split up, when, uh, the divorce was a bit messy, and I couldn't really stay in the music business because there's, you know, there's only a few recording studios in London, I would have bounced in into him, bumped into him um, quite often, so I got out of the music industry and into, for heaven's sake, I worked at Chelsea Football Club, I went into football, how I did that, I don't know, another accidental step in my life, <laughs> crazy but true, I worked at Chelsea Football Club um, um, doing sponsorship and events and things like that, um, and then I worked for a sports manage, celebrity sports management company and we looked after people like David Beckham. We looked after footballers, tennis players, rugby players, cricketers, um, anybody in the sports world, presenters. Um, we looked after them and that was in, uh, in London as well. And I valued that. That was a great experience. And I worked on a big um, sport event um, called Euro 2000. And that was working, running the, helping co-run the... Euro 2000 event through about eight different sporting stadiums, football stadiums in the in um, Holland and I can't think where the other oh Belgium, Holland and Belgium, um, and that was a lovely sporting event to witness. Um, hard hard work, but great. So then I went into horse racing. <laughs> um, I worked within um, I think looking after the VIPs and then running events and things in for the VIPs and the jockey club members. I was worked at the jockey club. They had about a hundred and something race courses around the UK um, and they were the regulators of the sport. So they had a courtroom within their premises and they regulated people who were fraudulent within the, within the sport. So that was interesting seeing the law side, legal side of how horse racing works. And then I went from horse racing and got fed up with lining the pockets of the rich and I wanted to line the pockets of the poor bit of an old romantic I am. Um, so I worked for about a year and a half in um, raising funds and delivering it um, funds to HIV orphanages in Africa um, anything to do with children um, helping children out and that was quite an eye-opener and quite sad and happy um, raising thing, money for things like schooling, books, uniforms malaria nets, medication uh, water pumps, whatever they needed in that part of the world to um, help look after the children um, that was tough good and I would like to do some more of that. Um, then after the, um, after that what did I do? Gosh I'm so old, I've done so much. But I've been writing for about 15 years on and off um, in my weekends, in my holiday time. And now I'm part time and I'm working for the police as a, um, as a criminal investigator. So I've worked with the major crime team as an intelligence analyst. I've worked with um, the wanted unit, the absconder unit, tracking down people who are wanted. I've worked and I've been trained up to work as an investigator when they give you training. Um, civilians are, are being employed by the police now and they give you quite strict training in um, interviewing techniques and the law and forensics and um, the stuff that all of them putting court files together, working with CPS, standing up in court. And um, It's quite it's like a university degree, but it's uh, quite a tough thing to learn, but it's well worth it and very interesting and you can help people um, especially people that aren't brave enough to stand up for things on their own um, you can make a big difference and I take my hat off um, to the police as I said before I think they do an amazing job um, in difficult circumstances and they've got hearts of gold so um, I'll help them in the future whenever I can but they have been um, it has been an interesting learning curve and God knows how I got here but I'm now here <laughs> Um, yeah, accidental life, I would call it. What are your writing habits? I'm a bit of a girl. 
I like smelly things, so I like candles or incense. Um, I like an atmosphere. Um, I have to have nice lighting, nice smells. Um, music's really important to me. Sometimes I write classical, Spanish guitar, um, uh, Richette Baker, a bit of jazz, a bit of Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, um, disco music sometimes. It depends what scene I'm writing. The more morbid scenes, the thriller, the crime thriller moments, um, the psychotic moments are probably classical. Don't know why. A bit of classical music, a bit of crazy Mozart helps me get through those. Um, yeah, so music, smells, um, um, and a silence. I have, I live with dogs. I've got a couple of dogs. They're sleeping under my seat right now, so I'm going to whisper a bit. Um, uh, so if, when they sleep, it's lovely because there's no barking. <laughs> I hope they don't wake up and bark now. And if you hear some screeching out my window, seagulls are out there, so you might hear a few seagulls. But um, yeah, I, I set the scene for when I write. I get, I have to have, everything's got to be, my desk has got to be clear. I've got to do all the washing up, all the laundry, everything's got to be done. I can't start my day without um, everything organised. I'm a bit anal like that. Um, yeah, so I set the scene for my working. Get an empty head. Um, no chores outstanding. And um, I get on with them with with the writing and go into the zone. I'm a bit of a recluse. Um, I don't go out much anymore. <laughs> um, I stay home a lot and write and I'm a bit like a mushroom in the dark. It's a bit of a lonely life but with the dogs they give me a bit of a heartbeat in the in the premises so um, yeah. yeah. You're right again, nice cuddly dog because they help. Okay, um, what's the strangest thing you've ever had to research? I hope that nobody ever gets hold of my laptop history because they're going to think I'm a bit of a psycho, a bit of a, a crazy person. I uh, research things like blood splatter, how far does it go, or gun residue, or how to drown, how long does it take to dr die drowning. Um, uh, strangest thing probably was, um, can a man bleed out, die from bleeding out when he's had his cock cut? Not very nice, I know, but I needed to know it for a scene. <laughs> yeah, I am a nutter. Um, strange things, strange things get researched on my um, in my history. So please don't ever get my laptop stolen. Thank you. Um, which of your characters would you want to date? Well, Jack in the deal. He's quite cute, but he's a bit young for me. He's about thirty-two. I probably his father. If his father was free. <laughs> His father might be my right age group, but I'm going to shut up right now because my daughter won't talk to me. She'd be hugely embarrassed if I go now talking about men, which is not good. Um, uh, and how else can we contact you? Okay, if you want to learn more about me um, and my books, I'm on Amazon. So it's SC Cunningham um, is my Amazon page. And I've got a website, sccunningham.com, um, Twitter pages at sccunningham8, and Facebook as SC Cunningham dash author. So I'm under SC Cunningham because my name is Siobhan Karma Kathleen Tara Cunningham. <laughs> so SC Cunningham is um, easier to say and also Siobhan is very difficult to spell. It's Irish and if you know how to, thank you, I take my hat off to you. Um, it's spelt like S I O B H A N, which is apparently B and H in Gaelic is pronounced V. So there you go, you can stun people at dinner parties with knowing a bit of Gaelic. Um, thank you and do come on again to, my, uh, to watch my next video where I'll be answering more questions and remember if you've got some questions for me just um, email them to office at sccunningham.com and I'll try and answer them. Thank you. Now I'm going to put my glasses on because I've got to find this off button because we didn't have computer stuff when I was growing up in school. I'm a bit of a dumb blonde at it so I've got to find it. Okay now where is it? Okay stop recording I'm pressing it now. Ciao.